Okay, I hope you're good because we are now recording. If I'm not good, we're stuck. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go because you know what? We don't edit nope. this video. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Babylon 5 for the very first time. Jeff and I have watched, and now for a word. Jeff, I feel like I have watched, and now for a word, for the last what, 36 30, episodes. 36 or so, over, yeah. yeah, over and over again. Yeah. I'll just say, like, my shirt just kind of gives me that, that this is my impression of the episode. It's my shirt. Yeah. That's uh in already, like I can already feel people going like, yo, sons of bitches, I'm out of here. And they're already talking trash again. Stick with us. Stick with us on this one. Yeah. Trust we, me. We um we we have maintained our heel turn ways. Yeah. And man, we are here. Like, look, you are wearing a Star Trek shirt. I am wearing a Star Trek shirt. Because <laughs> we didn't plan that either no, man, at all. You're seeing a regression, people. That's what's happening. Oh my gosh! But that let's, said, let's go watch. No, anyway, well, I do have some good. I have some really good things to say do you? in this one. I really do. I really do. God bless you, man. Because I have like four notes for the whole thing. I told I told the people when when I was doing the the Brent watches video. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen it yet or mm -hmm. not. Jeff. I never watch it till after we do these. Oh, fair enough. Fair. Oh, that that actually is really smart for podcast. Right. Um. But we I kind of have a shtick with that we do. We have a thing, so, right? Right. Yeah. Um, we got, we got, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was like right around the first commercial break or something. Like I paused the video and I was like, guys, this is going to be one of those episodes that I don't have a whole lot of things to say about. And I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of reactions to either. <laughs> like I just told you when I was, I was right. It was right. Anyway, uh, what you guys are about to watch is Jeff and I record the podcast this is the behind the scenes. This is the show about the show. This is the real show, to be frank with you. Um, and uh, Jeff and I are going to go through that. You guys like the show. Uh, uh, sub Submit not. What's that button up there? That's the subscribe button. That one right there. I don't think there's a subscribe. Sub and uh, like, comment down below. Please, no spoilers. We'd appreciate that. Although I'm not really sure you could spoil anything from this episode. There's uh, some joke in there and comment down below something that in lurkers, I'm not putting it together, but okay, okay. We'll just say, Hey, there's a good joke. Here you go. There you go. There you comment go. I can, ar I can already predict Jeff. So there's the, I'm, I'm just commenting predictions. There's the commercial in, in the middle of this episode, the psychor commercial. And we're going to get so many, the core is the mother and the father, which I know is an inside joke that people out there are throwing out there that you and I really don't know. We could probably make a good guess, but again, guys, that's the kind of stuff that's like, don't do it. Okay. Inside jokes that, you know, that we don't understand yet and, and clues and hints and little references, just guys leave that out. We'll talk about that when we get through the whole thing well, frankly, and we'll come back and see it. And frankly, if you want down below, eh, down below in <laughs> our show description, there's a little link. You can hit that. You throw a couple bucks our way and you can talk about whatever you want in that thing. You oh, see it. We have a, we have a, what we have a discord server. Yeah. We don't talk about it a lot. And thing. Yeah, yeah. We don't talk because I, we don't want to necessarily be like that, but go there, do the we, stuff there. We literally set that up. So you guys can go say whatever the Sam Hill you want. That's how we cuss without cussing in Kentucky, Jeff. That is. Yeah. Sam, not Sam Hill, Sam Hill, Sam Hill, whatever the Sam Hill you want. But you come off that stroking Hill right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh frack all right um let's get into this jeff we're I'm talking glad you about said frack i have a battlestar galactica reference in this one nice yeah let's do it let's do it ready yeah it's my first time you knew there are first time Welcome to Babylon 5 for the first time, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I'm watching Babylon 5 for the first time. And I'm Brent Allen, and normally I'm watching Babylon 5 for the first time, but Jeff, after this episode today, I feel like I've now watched it for the second time, at least all the episodes we've seen so far. <laughs> Jeff and I are two veteran Star Trek podcasters that are watching Babylon 5 for the first time or the second time, depending on where we are in the whole thing. 
And we're searching for Star Trek like messages within the series and trying to decide just how much we like the series. And while this is not a podcast about Star Trek, we are Star Trek podcast errs. So those references are going to make their way into here. So we play the rule of three. That means each one of us gets three references to Star Trek up to three. And that's it. Three. One of those three. No substitutions. Exchanges are <laughs> But we get an almost unlimited amount of comments, emails, and reviews from our incredible community out there. And I want to kick this off, Brent, with a five-star review. Oh, yes. This is on Apple Podcasts from Narsham. Narsham says, started out feeling like two Trek bros were going to snigger at B5 while mispronouncing, G I'm going to try and mispronounce these here, Gakar, Lenny Air, and Ivanova's name, but stick with them. The focus on comparing to Trek leads to some unique responses to some episodes. And near the end of season one, they started really appreciating B5 for itself. Plus, hilarious guesses about the story arcs. True. All of that is true. And we'll only one day find out just how hilarious those guesses really are. <laughs> but we're glad you guys are enjoying them. That's why we do the show. And Thank we got you for that review. That was a great review. We got another five star review. Oh, yes. Wait, Jeff, I'm sorry. Are we Trek bros? Right now, in this moment, wearing our Star Trek t shirts and what we said in the pre show, if you're listening to the audio version of this on YouTube, we have a little oh, you're pre banter. So much. You're missing so much. Yeah, you should check it out. It's good. But yeah, I, th I think right now, in this exact moment, we are Trek bros. I'll take it. It's not a reference, but I'm going to give us <laughs> doesn't count, but that's it's just for what it's what we're bringing to the table today. <laughs> hey, play the thing again. I'm totally going to play it again. Which thing? I have a lot of things over here. Almost as many as a Centauri. <laughs> you know, just pick one. It doesn't matter at this point. Three, three. One of those three. No substitutions. Exchanges are really fun. <laughs> but I'm going to play another one because I'm going to go back to our five-star review. Oh, Yes. This one from our buddy goes under a lounge lizard. He says, Hey, I know that name. Yeah. Norman. I know who this is. Yeah. What's up Norm. Thank you so much for this one. He says, I've been a fan. And this one, we talked earlier about insider stuff or whatever mm -hmm. loaded. This review is loaded with it. Going to go right over my head. But for those of you listening or watching, you're going to be like, Oh, that's good. You know, that's good. Okay. Here's the thing. If you can do it artfully. I'm going to be okay with it. And if I know Norm, this is so skillfully crafted. It's going to be amazing. I'm I'm on the edge of my seat. Well, and frankly, if you can do it in a five-star review, that's a, it's a great place to do it. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> says, I've been a fan since the beginning. Not in the beginning, but since February 1993, when the P10 Network released The Gathering. Yes, with the Stuart Copeland score. I've participated in, seen, and heard many Babylon 5 blogs, vlogs, and podcasts, many of which I've enjoyed. But what I really love about these guys is the joy I hear in their delivery and the honesty in their critiques. There's an art to having fun with a review, but also being true to the critical analysis. So if you're a fan of Babylon 5, I urge you to give Jeff and Brent a chance. I think they will surprise you, even for old First one fans like myself, mm -hmm. I'm jealous that they have so much ahead to enjoy and discuss. Norm, thank you for that. There are definitely a few references in there. I'm not really sure what you're talking about, but, uh, I really appreciate that. And coming from you, especially that's very high praise. And, uh, Jeff and I are grateful for that. I, I don't know. I'm speaking for Jeff. Jeff, you might be like, screw this guy, but I think. I'm probably saving what I just said. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Norm and, yeah. uh, means a lot. And I also appreciate that he quoted and I air quoted on the read. He mm -hmm. quoted some of the, the things so I could at least give it a little emphasis when I read it. So people were like, oh, that's a thing. So there you go. Well done, sir. Well, Jeff, you know, along with our game of the rule of three, there is another game that we like to play when we get to the end of these episodes where we try to guess what next week's episode is all about without actually having seen it 
or looking at a thumbnail or reading the show descriptions, which usually aren't that helpful anyway. And now's the time to pay the piper, my friend. It's time to look back on what we said last week was going to be this week and see how right we were. Jeff, I would like to go first. <laughs> we both, we, we, we really need to like, do we nail this 98%? Like all, I, this, all the way. Right. I beat like for beat. I basically, I think I basically said that this was, um, did I, didn't I say this had something to do with like a carryover from the store and mm -hmm. like it, it was a commercial. And then you, I just to replay that whole conversation, then you were like, yeah, but what if it's like, you know, a mockumentary type thing or documentary where they send a journalist crew over to the station and they're interviewing people and we're getting things, we're getting the story through those eyes. And I was like, yeah, that makes way more sense. So high five to you, Jeff. But frankly, yeah. frankly, we both got it because there was some really weird sponsorship stuff going yeah. on in the whole thing. And then, yeah, it was a mockumentary. It was a reality show. It mm -hmm. was all of the things we guessed what it was about. And basically you can go listen to our guests and that's going to be, I don't know, 70% of this episode yeah. <laughs> today. So good job, Jeff and Brent, but mostly Jeff. So uh, with that, just to actually see how close we were, Jeff, I'm so glad you're the one to do this this week. Would you please be the one to remind the folks out there what this episode actually was all about? Coming up next on Babylon 5, for the first time, a special feature. It's 43 minutes of 36 hours on Babylon 5. Wait, I'm sorry. Stop. Stop. Did this just <laughs> occur to me? Is this episode 36? Oh, my gosh. Let me look. Because uh, if this is episode 36, that is one hour per episode that we've had so far. <laughs> this is episode 37. So we, this is our 38th episode. It's our 38th. Yeah, but if we're in that order, you know, there's some, some conflagration. Well, we can call it the 36th because the gathering is actually episode zero. Right. So this is our episode. So this literally is 36 hours of Babylon 5. And here we are. I'm so sorry. Did you put that together? No, not at all. I That's... just got that. I'm so sorry. I completely interrupted your deal. Go back to doing your thing. No, it's totally good because last week you brought a bunch of math and now you're bringing more numbers. It's fine. <laughs> it's, conf it's confusing to me, but it's still really cool. Okay, back to the recap. So we get an inside edition style mini documentary slash news expose in this one. The wildly charismatic Cynthia Torkman is broadcasting her attempt at the Pulitzer Prize or whatever they've got in the 23rd century. And we get to watch along. And yes, by wildly charismatic, I mean that she is totally bringing the O'Reilly factor front and center. As she and her crew are approaching the station, a Narn ship attacks and destroys a Centauri ship. Right from go, it's clear this is not going to be a fun, day-to-day, lay-in-the-life kind of story that she puts together. Londo is screaming that the Narn attacked them in neutral space, while Jakar claims they were transporting weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, that probably had a different sound to it back in 95 than it does now. Torkman intercuts interviews with people on the station and the head of the Senate Babylon 5 Oversight Committee. Com committee? Wow. And that one again. <laughs> there you go. We're going to go back. Torkman intercuts interviews with people on the station and the head of the Senate Babylon 5 Oversight Committee, Senator Quantrell. From the Quantrell interview, we learn quite a bit about the station from Earth's perspective. And Torkman shares some as well. There's a 41% disapproval rate. Apparently, the expenditures are astronomical. He claims that despite the need for Babylon 5 when it was first rolled out, Earth has made a lot of advances technologically and militaristically and now could give the Minbari a run for their money. Now, you remember the Minbari, right? The ones that only lost one single ship in the entire war, the ones that were like three tech ages ahead of earth and decided to shift from a domination victory approach to a more diplomatic one in the intergalactic game of Civ six that we're playing. Well, yeah. So on top of that, this Senator's pretty wishy-washy on whether he thinks Babylon five is worth it or not. 
Torkman interviews Sheridan. He paints the station as necessary from a military, economic, and diplomatic perspective. Garibaldi, who just doesn't want to get fired for his interview. Delenn, who is overcome by emotion. Del Vientos, remember that guy from By Any Means Necessary? Yep, he's still checking all the stereotypical blue-collar worker tropes. Then we get Ivanova, who responds to the question that there must be more to her story with... Yes. And Franklin, who gets all passive-aggressive, high and mighty, as he waxes nostalgic about, well, kids being kids. <laughs> but the Narn and Centauri situation is escalating through all of this, and it's escalating dramatically. It turns out that, yes, the Centauri have been using Babylon 5 space to transport and transfer heavy weapons. This leads to an embattled council session and eventual standoff between a Centauri and Narn battlecruiser and Babylon 5. As Torkman interviews Londo and Jakar, we learn a lot about how they see themselves and how they came to be. Londo sees himself in the Centauri as benevolent, trying to help the poor, agrarian Narn. While Jakar grew up with his father working as a servant in a Centauri home, when he spilled hot jala on the mistress of the house, he was strung up for three days and died. He urged Jakar to fight and to be all the things that he could never be. The standoff ends in tragedy. The Narn destroy the Centauri ship, but their ship is damaged and destroyed when trying to open a jump gate. Like it or not, Earth is a lot closer to involvement in this war than Sheridan or anyone else wants to be. The episode ends with Torkman saying that she believes Babylon 5 should be given some time to show its value. She asks everyone if all the hard work, the fighting, and the tragedies are worth it. And Ivanova sums it up best with the answer that has served her well. Yes. Brent, what were your first reactions to a now for a word? Jeff, how, how do you feel about clip shows? I, um... I understand that they played a role back like in the eighties and the nineties. You know what I mean? Like there was so, a, there was a need. So this time. episode, this episode did something I've never, ever, ever seen before in my life. And I really respect it. This was a clip show without showing any clips, but that's what this episode was. It was a clip show to rem all it did was just tell us everything that we've known from the last, I'm going to say it, 36 episodes. It's recapped all of that and brought us up to speed. Now, I get it. And, and, and this one completely feels like a push on JMS by the studio. And I've, I've used that twice in a row now, two weeks in a row, that the studio has pushed stuff on JMS. Um, and you remember how last week I said that I felt like Ivanova... Um, the, the conversation between her and Sheridan was like a lift between JMS and the studio execs. Mm -hmm. I think the conversation between Ivanova and the name of the news anchor lady Torkman. Yeah. That one. Um, God, that feels like that's a, yeah, that was very, words, in, like, very intentional. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that conversation between those two kind of feels like JM. I wonder if Ivanova is like a mouthpiece for JMS. Huh? in this show, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, he just kind of says what he's thinking about everything. And, uh, I, I feel like when she's sitting there going, okay, well, here's this, this is what we've got going on. Yes, it's fine. This is who I am. And, and then she's like, is there more to the story? And he's like, yeah. Like that's <laughs> Go kinda, watch it. It's kind of go watch it. <laughs> like, I, it's a, it's a great point though, too, because I think when Torkman does go to question her, like it's so like the, the perky and energetic I, Ivan, Ivanova, like he said it I, harsh twice, twice. And I, and I almost like, I could see that like the studio being like, oh, and your baby lawn five, uh, your little, your little cute little thing, your alien thing, you know, tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Ivanova, Ivanova. Although I got it. I did get a little miffed. Because what I fully expected her to do was to correct her and say, no, it's Ivanova or somebody. I expected somebody to call it out, yeah. but they let her get away with it. Well, I think Ivanova let her get knew, away with that crap. She knew it was up and she's just like, I mean, I could waste my breath or I could just like wait for this thing to be over. So uh, overall, um, I actually have a lot of respect for this episode. 
It did what it needed to do. It did it in a super creative way. I watched this episode twice before tonight. The first time I really enjoyed the episode. I thought it was so cool the way they did it. The second time. I think I was falling asleep. It doesn't hold up to a second viewing. Cause I had the same thing. First time I watched it and I was just like, wow, this is, Mm -hmm. this is cool. This is, this is great. I learned all this new stuff. And then I watched it the second time and I'm like, yeah, no, I really didn't. Actually. Right. Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we learned anything. I mean, I, if I could recap this episode, it was okay. Here's everything that's happened up to this point, And oh yeah, we are actually in the middle of a full blown war between two of our, of our major powers. And oh yeah, there's also Mars and there's also Psychor. That's a thing. You got the earth first thing going on over there. Here's every single one of your people that's on the DVD cover and what their motivations are. And here's a little bit about the station itself. Yeah. That's the episode, Jeff. There's, there's not a lot. I mean, I don't know. You said you had more notes than I do. There's just not a lot for me out of this episode to, to grab onto. I think we got some deeper dives into a handful of things. Like there's some nuggets we definitely got out of this, but I, I've got some good notes. And when we get to the end to the recap, I actually have quite a, I have a lot of thoughts. There, this was. This was, I will say, I think this was one of the more Star Trek episodes when you, especially when we get to that and we start talking about a hope of the future, Sheridan's whole speech at the end was, here's why we should have hope. I, they say it in the title every day. It's the last best hope. Like there has to be hope in this show. Right. So, although Ivanova rebranded it last week with, it's our last best hope for a quick buck. Right. (laughs) Right? That's maybe that's all it is. So. Jeff, take it, whatever you got, man. Uh, yeah. So help me out on this episode, this is a, so I like this. Um, I like this TV storytelling device, you know, of like mm-hmm. doing the, but to this point, I don't think it was very widely used. Mash had done it a couple of times and really well mm-hmm. when they did it. Like they, they brought in like actual news footage that they had for, for background stuff, but, and then saved by the bell, I think might've done it before this. They did one. It was like a looking at. Zach doing, I think he was running for class president or something. And Mm -hmm. they did a version of this, but I like the, the concept and it went on because I I think I'm going to say because of this episode, there was a Buffy, the vampire slayer episode that was like this. And there was a Battlestar Galactica episode. They did a Stargate SG one episode. Oh, really? It was a a big momentous episode. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I got to believe that those wouldn't exist without this one. Like, I think mm-hmm. Babylon five is really held in high regard for being the first as like a serialized TV show and things like that. Sure. But I think this is a big deal too, the, you know, but, but also like it just, I don't know. It, it's just trying to be stylistic with some of the, like we're going when Quantrell, the Senator and Torkman were talking to each other, that was so mm-hmm. clearly recorded at separate times. Like they sure. weren't, they were not in the same room and it was so clear. Mm-hmm. When Torkman was talking to Delenn and even Londo, I think they had like a, a different film style on Delenn. I, and I assumed, I assumed that what we were seeing on Torkman was our regular camera. And what we were seeing on Delenn was her camera. Mm-hmm. So it was whatever filter they had to make it look like it was coming from the documentary camera. Cause they're not going to have that on Torkman. Yeah. They're going to have that on Delenn. That's what that's because I noticed that. And, and that's it was, what I assumed it was. It's a neat idea. It did not work. It looked awful. I thought, and it, it pulled away from me. So I, I was just thinking about a couple of things. Like I thought, I thought Torkman's performance was terrible. It was awful, but I think it was supposed to be, you know, like we were supposed to not like her. She was totally hundred percent Bill O'Reilly and especially oh. Bill O'Reilly from inside edition through this. But I went to notice that the, the director, cause you got it. When you look at performance, you got to look at the director and it was Mario DeLeo who directed this. Okay. He also directed the long dark, which is oh. our least favorite episode, almost oh. of Babylon five. Really? Yeah. And he got a terrible oh. performance, you know, out of like great actors yeah. in, in that. And so I don't know. I, I feel, <laughs> I feel like I, I like this episode, but it has so much working against it just in, in how it was put together and then what it actually accomplished. Like, I almost think it was almost like, you're right. Like the studio was like, do this thing. And he's like, 
Okay. There you go. I, I'll give you another reason. And, and I did note this episode was written by JMS. And we've been told and we understand that JMS usually reserved the big stories for himself. So I kept waiting like for something big to happen here. And the only thing that I could think is we're on the precipice of something here, Jeff. And th- like, I don't know. I don't know if we're watching this in the correct order or the way that JMS intended it. We're, we're just following our buddy's order that he suggested. So uh, shout out to John. You're awesome. But this would be the kind of breath you take in a 22 episode season. 22 is a lot of episodes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and not all of them can be bangers most of the time, but 22 episodes to stop, take a breath. Let's review, particularly for the new people who've just joined in, mm-hmm. who, especially in 95 it, where it's, who, they yep. can't go binge. If you, if you missed the previous episodes, you can't go back and watch it and say, let me, let me get it, you know? So to, to pause for a moment, catch everybody up because of what's getting ready to happen. Like I actually see this as a good sign that season two is about to turn a corner here. And I really hope that I'm right about that. Well, I think given the episode that's next, yes, I got to agree that we're about to roll, start rolling downhill. Like the roller coasters reach the tipping point sort of a thing. And, and it is. And I think this, it did ratchet up the Centauri darn thing. Like, Earth is on the precipice of actually being involved in this war. Now, Jakar even outright like said, Hey, with the help of Earth, we can do these things now. Like that's a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. But I think I, I I have a section of my notes that are just things that we know now about Earth and Babylon five that okay, we didn't know before. It. So um Earth has put outposts and colonies on twenty four worlds in fourteen different solar systems. Cool. Mars is apparently the only trouble spot. I thought it was interesting how they, the, the words they used though, right? Like, uh, the terrorist attacks on the earth loyal major majority. You know, like they're definitely trying to paint Uh the, uh, the, uh, was it Mars first group Uh is just straight up terrorists. What else? Um, Babylon five is eight. It's over eight kilometers long. There's 6,500 Earth Force personnel on the station. Mm-hmm. In the last, uh, year, it's like two years have been 50 deaths by violence on the station. Wow. Yeah. Well, of course, because they could just walk around and punch each other yeah. and beat each other down with a wrench. You know what interview I wish they got was Ned Toth. Not season two Ned Toth, but season one. Like, get her one-on-one. Uh-huh. One. Just <laughs> let, let Torkman go to work on Ned Toth and see how that works. So funny story just about that real quick, Jeff. Uh, you told me last week that the actress that played the lawyer was Natoth, mm-hmm. right? Well, I I went to watch this episode um, for the second time, and I turned on the the I had it on the TV downstairs, and and I like like I I kind of had it going, and then I had to run to the next room for something, and when I came back she was on the screen, like the TV had just started playing and I didn't necessarily mm-hmm. realize it. And she was on the screen. I was like, Oh shoot. It's gone to the next episode. And she was in the next episode. I was like, Oh no. But I sat and watched her for a minute. I was like, Oh, that's so the original Natoth. Yeah. Oh, she's amazing. I'm like, this seems really familiar. I realized it was actually last week's episode. <laughs> it was playing, <laughs> but I was like, to just to, to I want to come back just to give my stamp of agreement to what you said about her when you realize that it's her, you're like, Oh, she's so much better now. Yeah. And I kind of want her back in the show. Totally. Totally. She's so good. Let's see what else. Um, first commercial that came up was for interplanetary expeditions. That's the group that funded, uh, Ducky's thing and infection. Yeah. 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 So there's still a thing. I noted that. And then I think the other, uh, the other big one out of there was that, uh, they've, f- they've made an office of morale on earth. Huh. I, think, I think I heard about that in a little book called 1984. <laughs> yeah, that, that stood out pretty, pretty big. And then there's the Psychor commercial, but I think that could be a conversation of its own. <laughs> Did you catch the message in the Psychor commercial? Which one? The but subliminal, 
message? No. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. So, okay. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm going to have to send this over to you. I, I, I can't wait. I went through so much work to like frame by frame, go through it. So I, Oh, the thing that like flashed yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. What was that? So it, uh, so I, I got it screen. I screen captured it. So I'll put it out on, uh, on, uh, on Twitter okay. for people on our at Babylon first. I'll send that out, but it just says over the top, the Psy core is your friend. Trust the core. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. And then did you recognize little Johnny? He looks familiar. Why? So I, I'll tell I, you, I didn't know too much about it. So <laughs> That was one of the parts where like leading into that commercial is kind of where I started to phase out at one point where I'm just like, okay, oh, this could, and it came back and I'm like, is this a flashback to John Sheridan? Like, uh -huh. and they're talking about, Hey, people pick on me. Cause like, oh no, it's just a commercial. And it's a commercial, um, with a little kid who, if you remember in the next generation episode, disaster was promoted to be a science officer in the turbo lift with Picard and the other kids, because he had a science project with moths. <clears throat> he was that kid. Good use of a reference there, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks. It was, uh, <laughs> it was kind of a thing, but, uh, but then the scariest thing out of the, the, just kind of the stuff of what we know about earth and what came out of the newscast was near the end when Senator Quantrell says to Torkman, but thank you. I'm so glad you're okay. We need all the good reporters we can get. Like that was dripping with like villainous, ominous, mm -hmm. you know, ominous kind of stuff when he, when he did mm -hmm. that and hit pretty close to home in this world where fake news is still a thing that people use to like stifle conversation and, and communication. All right. I, I picked up on a few other things. Yeah. Uh, we got Kosh's last name. Yeah. Naranik. Is that his, like, is that his maternal, paternal family? I, well, yeah. I mean, it could be a last name. It also could be, like, a title, mm -hmm. just the way they do, like, a Satai, a, a title, Naranik, Kosh the Naranik or whatever. Um, I'm going to assume it's his last name. Interesting that Vorlon have last names. Yeah. Little energy beings or whatever they are. Uh, by the way, Kosh noping right out of that scene. <laughs> he went, that nope. That proves, that proves the Vorlon are on a different level than we are. Right. Right. He was just like, nope, nope. Um, Franklin's friend spaced himself, which I know was supposed to be a real sad moment, but it made me chuckle. Like he actually spaced himself. Sorry that he died. But then I got wondering, like in real life, starship space station world, People accidentally spacing themselves has to be a thing, right? It's just a button. Like, it's just a button. Like you, it's got to be way more secure than that. If that's the case, like, well, Torkman even said after that, well, the airlocks on Babylon five are much more secure than that. Mm -hmm. But seriously, who, who tells that story in an interview like that? Like, like of everything possible. He could, he could talk everything he could have said mm -hmm. that, that. And not only did he do it, but he just had that whole, like, even the lighting was dark and he's just like, they don't, you know what they don't tell you about? They don't tell you, you don't die right away. Well, he was tired. I, you know, here's the thing. I gave Franklin a little bit of a pass on that whole thing. Cause he was just dealing with all the, the blowout of the, the ships blowing each other to hell. And he's, he's at the end of a long shift and just feeling down and it's taking its toll on him and. They're sticking a camera in his face. By the way, someone sticking a camera in your face. They did Delen dirty in this episode. Oh yeah. And but here's. Oh, go ahead. Before we go there, just really quick, because yeah. I bag on we we bag on Franklin a lot, but I have something very yeah. nice I want to say about Richard Biggs, the Whoa. actor. Okay. In that scene right after the in the in the blast, and you know they're just triaging people left and right, uh -huh. and Torquin's like, "Hey, Doctor Franklin, Doctor Franklin." That was a one shot like uninterrupted one shot deal. And uh -huh. he is spouting off all the first aid stuff getting, that was amazing. Like what it took for him to do that scene. Like I, I cannot stand Dr. Franklin, but I am all about bigs. Mm. He was great. Okay. Dolan. Yeah. So you remember last week, Sheridan's walking down a corridor, dark corridor by himself. And he gets bumped into dude pickpockets him, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Delenn is having a one-on-one -on -one interview with this person. All right. Delenn is a major ambassador, major mm -hmm. ambassador to this station. Sheridan is the commander of the station. Delenn, where is Delenn's staff? Where is Lanier in that moment? Where is her communications director, her PR person? The person that this guy had, that this lady had to go through to set this interview up. The person who's standing right off the side, who is ready to step in at a moment's notice should bad things happen. Because when Delenn starts having this moment, she needed, Delenn did not have the ability to get up and walk away like, like she needed to. Yeah. And the other person didn't have the wherewithal. I mean, why would they turn that off? Like that's gold. That's, that's what they want. Oh, totally. But I get it. This is just a TV show. It's not real. It's fictional. I, I understand all that. Sheridan's not walking down a dark corridor by himself. He's got a, He's got staff with him. He's got people that are going places. There is no reason that his quarters or wherever he's going requires him to walk down that hallway ever. Same thing with Delenn here. Mm -hmm. And it kind of bugged me. <laughs> it bugged me a lot. So I, I have two sides of a coin thought on this one. Cause uh -huh. one is like, I, I, how do you be an ambassador? How without, without having any, she in the council chain, like she spoke great and she had yep. ideas and she was interjecting herself. But in doing that PR piece that ambassadors do like so unprepared, like yep. is unfathomable to me that that could have ever happened. But I think the story beat for it, this is my guess. Cause I, I think I had notes. I don't know if I talked about it last week, but I had notes because she ran off at one point all upset last week mm -hmm. also. Yeah, when when Ashan was calling her a freak and she just like ran away and was mad. And I was just like, you you were a satai. Like, and you're going to let some right. guy calling you a freak break you down? But what right. I think it is, it meant human emotions. That she's never had to deal with before. Exactly. And she doesn't know yeah. how. She's basically like a four-year-old child who just has this, this rush of emotion that she can't mm -hmm. sort out but is also at the same time having to work in one of the highest levels that exist in the galaxy. I hope they come back to that, right? Like yeah. this has got to be a thing, but I, I, cause I just, I, like you said, I cannot believe that she was so unprepared for that and so unsupported through it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And she, she really should have had something. Yeah. Lanier, for God's sake. I mean, he's there to protect oh, where her, is him. You know, like, where is Lanier? Yeah. Where is he? Um, and then the other thing I really noticed in this episode, did you notice the thing behind Sheridan in his desk that like it's hanging on the wall? It looks like a really huge cigar cutter. I don't think I noticed it. Yeah, like I'm trying to figure out what that is. It, huh. This has absolutely no bearing or importance whatsoever. But while they were droning on, my eyes were trained on this thing. Like if you look, it, you, you know what I'm talking about? Like those things you stick the cigar. Yeah, this, the snippers. The, yeah, yeah. It just, but it looks like a really big one of those just hanging on his wall right over his shoulder. But notice it next time you're in this. All right, this scene. But yeah, that's that's all I got on this episode, man. Well, I not mean, all. I, I, there's the spoken stuff too. I have a handful of other things, just Del okay. Vientos, right? So, I mean. Oh, he was the highlight of the episode to me. <laughs> he really was. Yeah. Like, in an episode that was kind of otherwise whatever, like, he was fun to see again. It just, I, I like the callback, and I like that he was the guy, right? Like, that was cool. But also, he's just like, oh, you know, you got to go along to get along. And, right. and then hits the other trope, like, was it all worth it? Well, you know, I got a retirement pension to make. It's just like, wow, let's, let's boil hardworking people down to like the lowest common denominator and call it Del Vientos. Let's do that. Right. I thought it was pretty, I really cool. wanted, I'm sorry. I really so, wanted him to reference getting a raise, having a few more workers or getting new equipment. Like uh, just, just give me a reference that that either happened or tell me it didn't happen. Oh, they promised it again, and there's another thing, and it just didn't work out. Like, yeah, give just, me something. Just, just they rolled it all up into a yeah. They tried to just last year with some budget cuts, but like that's a thing, and you know, got to go along to get along. Mm -hmm. Ugh, dude. Let's see, I, on the Franklin piece, I at the very end when they asked the big question, you know, is it all worth it? And he says, "If we weren't here, half the people in this room would be dead." 
And I was like, yeah, if you weren't there, those people wouldn't have gotten hurt. <laughs> like, God, you're terrible. I just, mm, right. he's the, he's the worst. And let's see. Well, let's talk about what I think was a huge thing. And that's, uh, Andre Katzelis and okay. his acting. Oh, okay. He had two incredible scenes in this. The first was in the council chambers where Londo was trying to argue and he throws a glass down. He's like, you're doing what you always do. Rah! Awesome. It was great. And then when he told the story of his, of his dad dying, like mm -hmm. uh, he, Jakar as a character is incredible, but I don't think anyone except for Katsalas could make him who he is. Like he right, is right. Jakar. It was so good. Um, it's one of the few times that I've ever thought of Londo as a human. Hmm. When he's telling the story of his dad, oh, Jakar, Jakar is a human. That's what I meant. Sorry, <laughs> Jakar. It's one of the few times I've ever thought about him as a human because the way he told that story, you could, you could feel it. You could emote with it. You could see it happening yeah. on earth, like right here, you know? And, uh, we was it last week we said we've been missing Jakar. Like Londo and Jakar are the magic. You need them together, yeah. right? And it was so good to actually see both of them in this episode. When I think what they showed it, it was an elevation because we talked, I think it was last week about how they need each other. We need, you know, they need to be together yeah. to be they weren't together. They were playing off of each other in interviews there, and it was still great. You know, ah, they mm -hmm. keep telling the they've changed history so many times, you know, and just the back and forth between them even separated was great but i think londo like you said londo's as a human i was like oh i think londo is getting very comfortable being the villain londo is bad he yeah. has fully embraced bad guy yeah he is defending his people he is making excuses he is uh being very flippant with lots of things and i don't like it no not at all and I don't, Jeff, I got to tell you, I know I've said that we got to get to a spot at the end of the season where like he comes back. It's the redemption of Londo. I don't know that that's happening. He's, he's still, I think he's still, I think he's got further to go before he hits rock bottom. Yeah. He has to bounce back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't think I don't, I, as much as I hate it, I don't know that we're going to see that again, uh, anytime soon. Like this could go season for the first time. I'm like. This could go seasons. I think that was my first call. It was like, we weren't going to see a resolution to him to like the fourth season or something like that. And uh, it's feel, it's feeling like that. Yeah, it is. It is. Wasn't Sheridan awesome though. In this one, like he was just so cares, like his smile, mm -hmm. like he, that's what it looks like when you got a PR person prepping you for the interview. Like he yeah. was ready. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, this isn't, this isn't a, a dig or a slam. But imagine that being Sinclair. That would have been an entirely different uh, uh, interview. He yeah. could not have handled that interview like that. No, nope. You know, um, which I think is part of his character. And I think it worked. Is Sinclair like not mm -hmm. being able to? But what I thought was cool, and I think it's one of those through lines of kind of, well, I, I think it's such a through line because Sinclair talked about it and then Sheridan brought it up, but the whole like, I got to make it worthwhile for all, like if I die and it doesn't mean anything, then what was I even here for? And what about all of our ancestors that go back? Mm -hmm. Like Sinclair talked about that last season and then Sheridan brought that up again. And like that, that's Sinclair's words put into Sheridan's mouth and honestly elevated because they were in Sheridan's mouth. And that's all I got. Well, Jeff, with that, um, let's get into the meat of the episode. Let's get to the spot that, that honestly Norman set us up for. This might not have been the best episode to read his <laughs> I know, uh, right? review on, but he said that we have the ability to do the analysis and keep things fair. My fair assessment of this episode 
it was a great creative way to give us a clip show without actually showing us any clips, a clip show without being a clip show. Yeah. And set us up for what I can only assume is getting ready to be the, the climax of the season, Mm -hmm. whatever they think they've been building to. We're about to turn that corner here for these last six, seven episodes. And I really hope that that's the case, but what does this mean on a more spiritual level? We said spiritual, not that what's, what am I thinking of metaphysical? Yeah. Ecumenical. I feel like philosophical philosophical. Yeah. yeah. Parlay. Um, but it's the star Trek equality, Jeff. We've reached that part of the show for the star Trek quality. Is there a deep moral message to this show? Is it holding up a mirror to society? Is it giving us a hope that we can be better in the future? Um, Jeff, you're going to rate this on a scale of zero to five deltas, how Star Trek it is. And I'm going to rate this on a scale of zero to five star furies as far as how Babylon five this show is. What you got, bro? Sheridan literally gives the Star Trek message word for word at the end of this episode. (laughs) Like he says it beautifully. He says, we're not enforcing the peace. We're creating the peace. Babylon 5 is built on the assumption that we can work out our problems and build a better future to make the work of our ancestors matter and our inheritors before us. We're going to create the world for them to live in. This was the break. I love this. We are in the process of building the future. That's what Babylon 5 is all about. And like I said, that's that's what Sinclair was saying back in the first season too. But it's not just that Sheridan said it. This was reflected through the episode. Londo says that we must work harder to communicate with one another. And he said it like in a way to set, you know, the Narns and Jakar up to look stupid or whatever. But I think deep down, I think deep down, he still believes that. Delenn said that humanity builds community with diverse and often hostile groups. And loved them what work together. loved. I'm sorry. To, I loved Delenn's statement on that. It's to me, it's a thing where. So often humanity is boiled down. It's either the, in sci-fi, humanity is either the group that everything is happening around or Mm -hmm. they're the ones that are like, well, we have emotion or we have the, no, we build community. That is what we do. And I thought that was so well put. Torkman, I thought this was great too. Torkman talks about how Jakar and Londo are saying the same things, but they're actually failing to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Yeah, they're saying the same things. Nothing's happening, but it's going to take Babylon five and humanity to bring them together to communicate. We even saw Sheridan and Babylon five, put their money where their mouth is on this, where they called the Centauri on their bluff, mm-hmm. knowing that if they didn't call them on their bluff, that they would sacrifice the future for, and, and invalidate the work of all the ancestors. And they would just end up in a big war and wouldn't actually be moving towards peace. It didn't come together the Star Trek message until the very end, but it did come together. Mm -hmm. And before I score it, I want to explain why I'm not going to give this five deltas. And it's really simple. Star Trek is about being in the more ideal future and Sheridan Mm -hmm. said it. We're in the process of building that future. It's what Babylon five is all about. I mean, it just said it. So I'm going to go with four and a half deltas on this episode. I definitely think that, That is the fundamental difference between Star Trek and Babylon Mm five. Well, I I think I've seen this in the comments a few times from some of our people out there. Star Trek is what we're going to get to Babylon five is how we're getting there. Yeah. You know, and and we're not there yet. And Star Trek has dabbled in how we get there a little bit, but still it's kind of a, we've already been there. Well, how do, uh, what does Star Furies look like? I'm glad. I just got to tell you, I was yeah. so excited to have Deltas on this one and not Star Furies. Yeah. So here's the deal. So you went this. I mean, people, here's what's going to happen. People are going to look because we don't publish these. We should publish. This needs to be a tweet every week, Jeff. Oh, like, yeah. uh, let me put more work on your plate here. This needs to be a tweet every week that's like, here's our Star Furies, here's our Deltas, you know, like a, a cool graphic or maybe something we can do. Um, but if people were to look at our, our Deltas and our Star Furies, they would be like, they loved this episode and I'm here to tell you, no, we did not, but I am going to give this one four star furies. It's a lot. And, and I want to explain why 
the star fury is not just how much did we like this episode? I think it is, it has, it's continued to grow and evolve. It's also how Babylon five is this? The deltas are how star Trek it is. How Babylon five is this? This episode is so Babylon five. And one of the things I love that Babylon five does that, that other star word shows do. And I, I don't just mean Trek. I'm talking about all the, star all the sci-fi shows right Mm -hmm. um it tells a story in its own way in a way that the other shows aren't doing or haven't done or in a way that the shows the other shows are copying yeah and the i I, i've said this at least a half dozen times how the heck do you write a clip show and never show a single clip it's pretty it is genius if I had never seen an episode of, of Babylon five before this episode, if, th- if this is where you introduced me, I would have everything I needed to be able to move forward. At least I think I would, I don't know. People out there are like, Oh, but you want to miss this. No, I, I think I would have been ca- that caught up everybody who needed to be caught up just enough to get them right where they needed to be. So we can move forward. And it did it in such a brilliant masterful storytelling way. That unfortunately, if you have just been binging the first 36 hours and you've gone, you've gone through that, like, it's like, oh gosh, do I have to sit through this again? And I got to watch this a second time too, to take notes now. Oh my gosh. Like if, if that's what you're having to do this, you're right. This episode does not hold up on a rewatch, at least not as soon a close rewatch, you know? Yeah. I had but a day between mine, like yesterday, today, and that's mm-hmm. too close, way too close. But, but as far as how Babylon five is this episode, oh, it's, it's great. And I mean, it literally is the story of Babylon five, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm going to give it four star furies just because it does it so well. It's just information. I don't feel like I needed. I love that. Cause I think, I think we weren't super high on this episode, but I can't, I mean, we said it and you just said it, but we can't overstate it. This episode was brilliant. Mm-hmm. I mean, brilliant. Jeff, please, please, can we just agree, though? This is not going to find its way sneaking into the top five of the season like TKO did. Because TKO last year, this this is this season's TKO. What? Objectively, no. it's not a great episode. But because of how they did it, how they wrote it, how they put it together, it is a masterpiece of storytelling. This is a masterpiece of storytelling. TKO was a good episode. TKO was an okay episode. I... But it made me feel quite a lot, and it is the I only. Like, I let you one. put it way higher than it should have been. It's the only but, season one episode I've watched since we've been in season two. I've actually gone back and watched it. It's, yeah, because uh, you were a guest on another podcast and needed well, that, to watch it for that episode. But I also did because I wanted to to watch okay, it. It was a enough. good episode. But let's find out where it's going to land because here in season two we are ranking the episodes. It's going to create the absolute 100% completely accurate definitive ranking of the second season of Babylon Five. I don't think I need to go through the top five on this one for you. So Brent, where do you put in now for a word? Oh, I get to do this one. It, yeah. <sighs> it's a lot of pressure. It is. Um, okay. Wait, do you want me to go over definitely, the rankings? No, 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 no. It's definitely not in the top five. So we're going to, we're going to push out. Which means soulmates stays in the top five. I keep waiting for soulmates to get pushed out. Because it should not be a top five episode. Well, I'm going to guess. That I'm throwing big money. Next week okay. it will be. Next week it'll get knocked out of the top five. I I agree with you. Um. So let's apply the litmus test. What show would you rather watch before watching this one again? Would I rather watch Gropos before watching this one again? Yes. Would I re- rather watch our episode from last week? There are all the honor lies. Yes. Would I rather watch Acts of Sacrifice? Which one was that one? Let's find out. <laughs> Let me pull up my notes from that week. Love this. This is one of my favorite things YouTube gets to see. Right? It's how the sausage is made. Acts of uh, sacrifice. That was a, a Sinclair episode. Not Sinclair. Sorry. Uh, Sheridan episode. Oh, that's why I can't find it. I was in the wrong folder. That will make a difference. Let's see here. Oh, this is where Jakar's desperate, Londo's lonely. 
mm-hmm. the Narn were attract, attacked. <laughs> this doesn't say anything. Oh, it's where dude, um, Ivanova had to, um, the Lumati, like she had to do the diplomatic first contact thing with the Lumati and they mm-hmm. had, to, had to do the sex thing at the end. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would rather watch that one before watching this one again. Okay. You should, um, state, you should state that again so I can easily edit it. <laughs> I would rather watch that one again than before. Uh, that was Axel Sacrifice, right? I'd rather watch Axel Sacrifice. Okay. Revelations. I just found it. I would rather watch this one before watching Sinclair talk to his sister ever again. Not Sinclair. Yeah, I just did it again. He Sheridan. Did. I would rather watch this one again than watch Sin- <laughs> <laughs> It's late. It's been a long day. Let's try it again. You watch this episode I, twice. It takes a long time to sh- <laughs> I would rather watch this episode again more than I would ever like to see Sheridan have a conversation with his sister ever again. So this is going in our number 12 number spot 12. above revelations, above a distant star way above the long dark. But I think this is going to get pushed down as the series goes on. And rightly so. Well, that's it for, and now for a word next week, we are watching in the shadow of Zaha doom for the first time. Jeff, are we missing an episode? Or not. Dude, I got the red thing again on my forehead. Do you? I just banged my head on the thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's right there. Sorry. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to make this an editing nightmare for you. I know. I am so sorry. Well, you know I what? apologize ahead of time. You want to talk about editing nightmares? Here we go. I don't know what happened. Or actually, uh-huh. I know exactly what happened. But w- last week, every time you hit that commercial thing, yeah. it created a new set of audio files. And so... I had to like chunk. I mean, it wasn't hard because they're time stamp, but like I had yeah. to chunk everything together a little bit and then figure out where those were supposed to go. Oh, but uh, yeah, who knew? Like, sorry, uh, I was there. Yeah, no. well, we're learning the tool. We're learning. There the you tool. go. It shouldn't do that, but okay. Yeah, so there was because there was talk at one point around um, and now a word and knives, but it's knives. Our, That's the episode I feel like because I know I've I, I <laughs> yeah, saw it because we had to do some stuff where we went back and forth. On yeah, it. so we do this in Zaha Doom, and then hey, spoiler! So here you're gonna have a little bit. Like knives comes after Zaha Doom. For okay, us. so do do your thing. Okay. You can cut all that out of the the big yeah. podcast piece, but do your thing again. Well, that's it for and now for a word. Next week we are watching in the shadow of Zaha Doom for the first time. Now we don't look ahead at all. We don't look at pictures. We don't read synopsises or synopses or anything like that. We don't know anything about them. So Brent, what do you think is going to happen next week on in the shadow of Zaha doom? Zathras return. Zathras been way long time. Zathras miss show. Zathras come back to show. You watch Zathras next week. Babylon five. First time. I feel like we should just end on that. that was so good. Do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Cut it. Cause there's nothing else we're going to say after this. That is going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Cause my guess is pretty, my guess is pretty lame compared to that. Ah, uh, shadows going back to the rim. Hey, remember there's a whole shadow um, thing going on. That's yeah, going to be that, true. but you know what? I, this is where I, I'm going to add, I'm just going to support your guess is the opening credits of season Mm -hmm. two talk about this being the year the great war started. I have a hard time believing the Centauri Narn war is the great war and the great war was referenced on Babylon four by Zathras. And so I think this is where the shadows, maybe this is where the shadows actually like come out and force an attack. And this is the beginning of the actual great war. You know, you just gave me hope that actually Londo might come to his senses and come back by the end of this, because if, this Narn Centauri thing is like a precursor to the war and not the war itself, then, you know, they're going to resolve this war and then the new thing is going to kick off because of it. And, uh, at least we get Londo and Jakar acting nicely together or nicely acting. Frenemies. Yeah. Being frenemies. Yeah. The best. We're going to find out here next week. 
Thank you all so much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or if you're watching us on YouTube. And please stop by Apple, leave us a rating, leave us a review, and I'll read it right here on the podcast. So Brent, until next time. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, Brent. Was it all worth it? All the stuff we go through, is it worth it? Yes. It's more first time. All right, Club 65, that's the show. That is. Hey, I need to tell you, my daughter, I showed her last week's episode that we did, parts of it. She won't sit and watch the whole thing because she's yeah. seven and she, you know. She, but I showed her the, the bear and she was so mad that I used her bear. She was angry with me. So, And then you renamed it to? To Berent, Berent Allen. <laughs> Berent it Berent has Allen. an actual name. I think it's S'more is what she calls it. But uh, yeah, she was not pleased with my use of her bear. <laughs> Don't you put my bear out there, dad. Right. That's funny. That's funny. Hey, Club 65. Look, Jeff and I gave you a lot last week. It's late. I'm going to get out of here. If Jeff wants to stay and talk with you, he's more than welcome to do that, but I'm going to go. That's great. I'm going to head as well. It's great. We have a whole, we had a big episode to get ready for next week. Yes, we do. But Brent. All right. And now for a word from our closing card or whatever we put it. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> Bye, guys. That's perfect. <laughs>